Hello and welcome. You're here with uh, me, Donna at Size Me, and today we're going to go through the tutorial for the VN dress, uh, which is this one with the wonderful pockets that we all love. We're going to go through step by step. Remember, you can pause it, you can look at it uh, again and again until you get the information. What I would like you to have with you also, just to prove it, is your instructions. I've got mine to make sure I don't do it in a different order because that's way confusing. Uh, so I'd like you to have your instructions with you as well as this tutorial because it really will uh, make a difference. Uh, I have presumed that you've set your sewing machine up, you've checked that it's correct needle and everything's working okay. Um, we have got everything cut out, we've transferred all of the construction marks across. The only thing I haven't done so far is um, the pattern that the, the fabric pieces sorry for the upper skirt the lower skirt and the pockets now some of you may have used the paper in order to cut these out and that's fantastic but i thought i would show those of you who didn't want to work uh, cut all the paper out uh, how to do it by tearing to make the sizes that you want so i'm going to show you that first and then we have all of our pieces uh, ready and then we'll start with step two right so where are my bits and pieces okay so this is a spare piece of fabric. Now this only works if you're using fabric um, that's lightweight and sometimes it doesn't work with all lightweight fabrics. So uh, what I want you to do first is to do a little test and I'd like you just to go down the selvage edge and just put a little cut. I'll show you on this other side. So I just want you to put a little cut like that, so that you just pass the selvage, I don't know, maybe a centimetre and a half, and then I want you to tear. So, fabric should tear in a straight line, which saves all the messing about with cutting, and that's why I wanted to show you this. Now, once you've done this first one, what it does is it gives you a straight line to start off from. Now, can you see it's stretched a little bit? Now, we can cut with a little bit of stretch, but if your fabric has really gone out of shape, then this method is not for you. But if it's stayed relatively uh, unripply, then you're good to go. Okay, so we start off with a straight edge. What you're gonna do, you're gonna look at the dimensions that you have, you're gonna measure from that straight edge that you've just created, and you're gonna measure down the selvage. I measured this one earlier somewhere. So the dimensions will be different, but this is the dimension for the lower skirt that we're doing. Ah, there we go. And I cut it. So once I've cut it, I can tear it, she says, all the way across. Like so. Now I need two at this length. So I'm, instead of measuring, I'm going to actually use the piece that we've just torn and I'm going to lay that down that selvage edge again. Show you. So I'm just matching the two ends. Go all the way down. And I'm just marking with the scissors again, just a little cut into the selvage and I can cut, tear off the second one. It's the first little tear that's the hardest. It's very satisfying. That noise is glorious, isn't it? Okay. So I now have two that are the right width, uh, length, sorry. I now need to sort out the width. Now, I didn't do any of these marks earlier, so you can do it with me. So I'm now measuring, so this is the selvage edge. I'm now measuring along the top for the length. And the length that I need for this particular dress is 136 centimeters so i'm pretty much going to do exactly the same thing that we did but i'm not measuring down the selvage i'm measuring across to 100 and 18 100 and 36 is there so i've got my location I'm just going to snip, just like we did before, and tear. So this bit is extra, so I'm just going to throw it over there so I don't get confused. When you've got lots of uh, different squares everywhere, it does get confusing and rectangles. 
So this is the other one. Again, I'm going to use the one I've just cut to the correct width as a guide. I'm going to match all of these edges up. Until I find the bottom. I'm going to snip. And then So the only other thing that we need to do on these lower skirts is there is actually a construction mark that is noted in the instructions and it's just simply the centre point along the long edge. So I folded it in half, this is my fold, folded it in half and on the top, so if your fabric has a, a direction, this is going on the top of this uh, skirt piece, I just want you to put a little snip right at the center point just like that so it's just replacing the construction mark so i'm going to do the same on this one now okay you can use exactly the same method to make your uh, upper skirt and your pocket pieces now if your measurements work out if your if one skirt one upper skirt and a pocket if the length of them goes across your fabric, you can just tear one strip all the way across and the pocket is the same depth or length, whichever way you want to uh, do it. So a little snip there for I've nearly tore it then, had I been uh, cross with myself. So they're the upper ones. So I have here in a pile that I tore earlier, the upper skirts and the pockets. Now the upper skirt piece here, it also needs those centre points marking, but it needs it marking at the top and here at the bottom. And that's on both pieces. So let's do that. If there's an alarm going off outside, I hope you can't hear it. Snip and snip. Whilst we have this laid in half, what we also need to do is to put some construction marks on the sides of these two pieces. Uh, basically, it's where the pockets are stitched. So if you take your raw edges and what you're going to do, you're going to measure four centimetres down from the top. She says, where did the tape measure go? Ah, wait. Okay. I'm just going to bring it down so you can see this a little more. I've got a new tripod, so if this goes wrong, don't laugh at me too much. I need two fingers. There we go. So this is my top edge here. I'm going to measure four centimetres down. I'm going to put a pin so you guys can see it. Sorry, I haven't folded it quite right. Four centimetres down. See the pin? And we're just going to put two notches. Just two little slits just next to each other. One and two. We're then going to measure 15 centimetres down, although I threw my tape measure on the floor. And this is for all sizes, so 4 centimetres and then 15. And at 15 centimetres, we're just going to put a single knot. I'm going to hold that up for you. So on both, both edges, We've got at four centimetres, we've got a double notch there. And then 15 centimetres from that, we've got a single notch. And that's on both sides of the upper skirt. You will also need to do that on the pockets themselves. So the pockets are smaller pieces. You're going to simply fold them in half, exactly the same process. And then down this edge, you're going to do four and a double notch and then 15. I'm going to leave you to do that. 
you may have already uh, you may have already done that part of the process but I think it's a really nice uh, way of uh, learning how to tear fabric because it does tear equally and in a straight line so if it's something you're nervous of at least it gives you that option now we're all good to go we're all marked there's just one more thing i want to say before we get stitching so uh in the instructions i've mentioned seam finishes um there are lots of different ways to sit finish a seam i don't like to assume that people have things like overlockers uh to to, to their disposal so i've listed kind of a hierarchy of seam finishes. So in the instructions, I don't use a seam finish because um, I like to focus on the actual sewing. Uh, in these tutorials, because this is gonna be the uh, dress that the model wears for the photo shoot, then I will be overlocking the seams. So you will magically see the seams are overlocked in between stages, but I'm not gonna focus on showing you how to do that. You finish the seams however you want to finish them. Okay, right, so if you grab a hold of your uh, front and back pieces, our first step is going to be stay stitching. So I shall see you at the machine. So we're here at the machine and we're going to stay stitch the neckline on the front and the back. Now we're doing it just to a single piece of fabric. So can you see, hopefully you can, this is the shoulder of the front and this is the neckline to the next shoulder. I'm simply going to place that on the machine. So I'm not stitching anything to anything. This is literally just a row of stitching. And we're going to do it at a one centimetre seam allowance. So I'm lining the fabric up here at the one centimetre line. This is simply so that whilst you're working on your fabric, you're not going to stretch it out of shape. When you then come to make the neckline, it should look really neat and sharp. Um, I don't know if you've worked with this type of fabric before, like a loose weave, uh, lightweight fabric, but it's very easy for it to become a different shape to what you originally cut. Um, I'm hoping some of you are nodding there and it's not just me. <laughs> that's uh, come across it but this step sometimes people skip it and okay you can do that if you're feeling brave enough you may get away with it but the day that you don't get away with it I do think you're going to regret it and I think it will make sure that you uh, take heed of this step going forward okay so that's the front neck all done and dusted I'm going to take that one away and then we're going to do the backs separately. So the back, we're going to go from the shoulder here to the centre back seam there. And we're going to do the, exactly the same process. We're going to line it up at 10. And just simply go all the way around. Second finished I'm gonna zoom out so that you can then see the next step so here we have the two back pieces laid out and we've got with the right sides of the fabric facing each other and we're going to pin along this back edge now sometimes fabric that's lightweight doesn't behave itself and you might think oh gosh my cutting out is terrible so long as you were accurate with your cutting out what you want to do is put a pin that matches it at the bottom and then a pin that matches it at the top and then if you have any construction marks in between, and on this one we do, we've got the little notch. Can you see the notch there? We have the notch that's maybe uh, two thirds up. Now that notch is actually important anyway, because that's where we're going to stitch to. But we're going to put a pin there. So all of your pins are fixing locations that are um, 
fixed <laughs> locations that are supposed to be in that location and then what you have to do is to make the bit in between do as it's told now you're in charge guys so if it goes wrong you only have yourself to blame but i want to show you how regular i put the pins some people may think that's quite excessive but with uh, lightweight fabric and to be honest this fabric isn't uh, too bad but with a lot of lightweight fabric um, you just need lots of pins and you take them out at the last moment when you're stitching so that it doesn't have a chance to move whilst you're doing it. So all we're going to do is stitch from the bottom up to that notch. We're going to do that at a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. I'll bring you in close so that you can see what that looks like. Okay, so hopefully you can see that I am lined up with the edge of the fabric here on the 1.5 centimetre seam allowance. My pin's there. Before I take that pin out, I'm just going to do my back stitch. And then I'm going to take the pin. Now, what I mean by at the last moment, watch how I can take it out a little bit and then a little bit more and then completely. So there's very little chance of that fabric moving. I'll show you again on this one. So I'm going to go right up to it, pull it out a little bit, and do a bit more stitching. And I'm only pulling it out so it's away from where the needle is, just to make sure my needle doesn't hit the pin. Now some people, they, um, uh, some people they stitch over pins, um, I don't recommend it. I like my eyes too much to do that. Um, also, I like my machine too much because if you hit the pin, there's a huge chance that what you're going to do is knock the timing out on your machine. Now, up here in the north, that costs around 40 to 50 pounds to uh, sort out. So, I like my money too much. <laughs> Maybe more than my eyes, who knows? <laughs> I've got to the pin where the notch was. I've put my needle in so I can take the pin out. And then I'm going to do a back stitch and I'm going to do it a couple of times because this is going to get a little bit of uh, pressure when we're pulling everything together because th this is the back when you're moving your uh, arms around etc so give it a few goes and there we go the next step is ironing or pressing or squishing as some people call it in my classes um, they don't really like ironing so I'll meet you there uh, if you take that piece to the ironing board along with your pins, we'll get going on the next step. So as you can see, my overlocking fairy has been in, but you do whatever you want to do with those seams. So this is the neck edge here. Pull that down, you can see it a bit better. See the neck edge there? And this is the opening that we've left. So we've stitched it up to here. And then we've got to finish this detail off. So the first thing that we're going to do is untangle my iron, sorry. The first thing that we're going to do, I want you to check that your iron is not going to mark your fabric. This fabric is quite uh, lightweight, whichever fabric you're using for this dress. I would hate for it to have an iron-shaped burn in it so early. <laughs> I'm definitely not late in the game. So I've checked my iron and we're going to press the seam in one direction and then in the opposite direction. Now, steam is your friend when it comes to this. Once you've done that, we're gonna open up and we're gonna press it in the middle. Now, I've only been working on the bottom. Let me bring that forward so you can see that a bit better. Can you see? I've only worked on the bottom half but what I want you to do is to take a look at the top half because that's the trickier section. So I want you to continue that seam up. So it's like a the one and a half centimetre seam allowance gets pressed over. I'll do this on the other side. Can you see that's all nice and flat? And the last bit, now not so much an issue if you've overlocked like I have. If you haven't overlocked, this is a much nicer detail. So you just take a hold of that edge, tuck it under and then pin it. I'll just pin and then my fingers are out of the way and you can see what I did. Can you see? So we're going to tuck the overlocked edge or the raw edge under and then we're going to pop a pin.
We brought it a little bit closer so that hopefully you can see the effect uh, that we're creating. So we're tucking under and then pinning in place. Can you see that down that edge? So we're going to do that to both sides. And then we're going to go back to the uh, sewing machine and we're going to stitch that in place. So here is one side of the um, opening and then we've got the uh, end point here and then we're back up the other side. Now this stitching is going to be visible on the right side of the fabric so I'm going to increase my seam allowance by a whole number. So on my machine that's gone up to uh, 3.5 and we're simply going to stitch down across and back up but we're going to stitch on this folded edge okay so we're going to do our back stitch as always and then we're going to take our pins out at the last available moment and we're off now sometimes can you see how it kind of curls just gently lift up your foot and pop it back where it belongs try not to cover that for you can you see Do you know? We always get things in the way, don't we? Right. To the back, out of the way. There we go. So can you see I'm going quite slowly because I want it to go right on that edge. Because what we're trying to do is to stop that edge flapping back over. So there's no point in going closer to this side because this edge will still come back over I just wanted to show you how to get past this point so you're going to go just past the opening point put your needle in lift your foot up then you can spin your project around that pin's going to be in our way put the foot back down and you're just going to stitch across the bottom so it's a little bit like a zip if you know how to do a zip I put the needle in again lift it up spinning round. The reason we put the needle in is to ensure that we don't move when we're turning it round. If you ever get like zigzag stitches when you're doing that it's because you haven't put your needle down to keep it in the right location so maybe that's a tip for you as we go through. Take this last pin out, we're going to go right to the top. When you've done this bit we're going sorry everything's tangled when we're done this bit we're going to attach the front to the back so this is the back of your project you can see the lovely open detail that, that you created and then here we have the neckline and the two shoulders we're going to take a hold of the right side of your the front sorry of your bodice and we're going to place it on top of this, so this is the right side of the fabric, and we're going to place the right side of this fabric on top. So we've got the two right sides of the fabric facing each other. When we've done that, we're simply going to match the shoulders and pin them in place. Again, we're going to use the tip that we're going to match the two ends because we know that they have to match because we're going to trust in our cutting out and then we're going to make it work in between. When you've done this, you're simply going to stitch across each shoulder and you're going to stitch with a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. I don't think you need to see me do that. Um, hopefully that's OK, guys. When you've done it, you're going to press those seams open. I have here the neck binding. Now, before we go any further, I want you just to check that you cut this on the diagonal across the fabric. It's very important that this is cut on the bias so that it can stretch to curve around the neckline. It's very um, tempting to save fabric and cut it across or straight down the grain of the fabric, but I promise it's not going to work. Your neckline's gonna look awful. So first thing, check that you've cut it in the right direction so it's like 45 degrees across your fabric feels like a real waste of fabric but it really isn't i've got the wrong sides facing the ceiling and we're simply going to fold it in half along the length like that 
and press it in place. Now, sometimes if your fabric is extra slippy slidey, you may first of all want to put some pins in. Um, the trick to this, because it is cut on the bias, it will have a tendency to stretch. And what we want to do is to prevent that stretch as much as, as we can. So can you see, I'm not um, stretching or pulling the fabric, I'm just rolling it over and popping a pin in. Seems like a whole heap of trouble for a neckline, but this is the tricksy bit. There's only two tricksy bits, I think, in this, maybe three, in this whole project, but this is one of them. And this one, if you don't do it right, you're really gonna get cross with yourself because you really do need to spend your time on this one. I've got a couple more pins, and then I'll show you um, the process that we're gonna use for pressing. Because what we're gonna do, we're gonna press, not iron. Now, when you're ironing, you have a tendency to wiggle your iron around. Um, we're gonna press, which is a real press, lift up, press. It's not a na -na 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 kind of uh, thing, because what that will do is it will stretch the bias binding. And we're trying everything in our power to prevent that. So it'd be a real shame if we put all the effort in and then we go and uh, stretch it whilst we're pressing. Okay, that's the last pin. There you go. Pressing just makes it easier to put it onto uh, the top, by the way, the top of the bodice. Uh, some people don't press it. I just think it makes life much easier. So can you see I'm lifting, pressing. I'm using steam. Steam is our best friend when it comes to creating creases. And again, make sure your iron is not so hot that it damages your fabric, but it does need to be hot enough uh, to put a really nice flat crease. Hopefully you can see that crease. Now I'm going to come back and I, we're going to have the bodice that we created so far. So it's the front and the back with the shoulder seams attached. And then we're going to have this binding as well. Along with your pins. Could you also have with you your piece of ribbon? Now this is really fine. I think this is three millimetres. If you don't have a little bit of ribbon, you can use a little bit of elastic. Um... It's not uh, terribly important. You're only going to use a tiny bit. And you also need to know which button you're going to put on the back of your project. So we have everything to hand and we can work on binding our neck. See you in a sec. I'm hoping this is a good angle for you to see everything. But let me just explain what you're looking at. So this is the back of your bodice here with the opening. And this is the front. Your shoulder seams are here. Um, I've got the correct side, the right side of the fabric is facing the ceiling, so all of the seams are hidden underneath. And then we have our uh, binding that we pressed a second ago. So we're going to start at one end of this opening on this one. So we're going to leave approximately two and a half centimetres over. Now, if you give me one second to put a couple of pins in... I can show you that close up. Okay, so I have started. Do it the right way around for you, darlings. There we go. I've started on this edge and I've left approximately two and a half centimeters over. Okay. Then I'm matching the two raw edges of the binding and the raw edge of the neckline, and I'm pinning in place. So if I flatten this back out again so you can see that process. So we're going to bring this binding and it's going to go all the way around here. All the way around. Back to where we started and again we should have a little overhang at this side but the important part is to bring is to follow the curve sorry so we're bringing the edges of the binding to the edges of your top the tricky bit is the shoulder detail here but you're just going to gently ease everything round that sharp curve and in place. Now when I've pinned, 
I will show you a close-up of those bits so that you have a better idea of what it's going to look like but we're just we're not stretching we're kind of placing and you might find that you get some ripples on the bias binding on the raw edge side it's fine if it's on the raw edge side because that's that's where it should be because that's excess fabric uh, so don't worry too much about that we're just going to bring it nice and gently round Now, there are lots of ways to do bias binding. I guess I should mention that at this point. Uh, the way that we're doing it today, you don't see the bias binding. So it's not like a trim along the neck. It will be folded onto the inside. So it's not a feature detail. Um, I like this way of doing it. I think it's, uh, I think you guys will tell me if it's not. I think it's more foolproof uh, than the other ways of doing it. I think it gives you better results. And I think certainly as a novice um, or an experienced sewer who just wants the detail to work out first time, um, this is a good way of doing it. Uh, so please don't think I'm reinventing the wheel. There's just more than, more, than, more than a three, more than a four ways probably of doing this detail. Uh, one of the things, if you are pinning on an ironing board like I am, don't pin it to your ironing board. <laughs> I have done that on a number of occasions. Doesn't help when you try to then take it across to your machine. Okay, one last pin, I think. Okay, so that's pinned all the way around. I have a, an overlap on both edges. I just want to bring you in a little bit closer so that you can see where are we, the detail here. See where the ripples are? But notice where you're actually going to stitch is nice and flat. Okay, so that's what it should look like. We're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch all the way around that with a one centimeter seam allowance so not a one and a half it's a one centimeter seam allowance um i should have said this before you did your shoulders but make sure you reset your stitch length to a two and a half uh, it doesn't matter if you've made that mistake on your uh, shoulder seams we can live with it my fault uh, but definitely for this one we want to be a two and a half uh, length for your stitch okay see you in the morning so we're ready to start i'm going to start at one of the edges of the opening at the back um, I'm going to use the edge of my foot as a seam guide. So we're going to follow the edge of the fabric on the edge of the foot. It does just make life uh, a little easier because this can be a tricky detail. The other thing to consider is when you get to the curves, you're not stitching in a straight line. You're actually stitching a curve. So you're going to let the fabric curl out in this side. I'm going to stick with you whilst you can watch me do the whole thing so you can see what, what I'm trying to um explain there but if you pull it too uh, straight when you're doing a curve it won't look great when you um, finish the detail off so let's get going we have a stitch length of two and a half and we do our back stitch as normal and we're going to gently take it around this neck edge So we're approaching the corner, or rather the curve at the shoulder. So we need all of this fabric to be over here because that's the shape we're trying to stitch, not that. Can you see, as soon as I do this, you get all of the um, creases in the fabric that you're gonna create a pleat when you stitch over them. So we're gonna go nice and gently and we're gonna pull the pins as we go. So this bit needs to be over the other side. So we're gonna go nice and steady. Hopefully you can see that from that angle. So I'm constantly pushing this fabric that way and pulling this around so that we've got the correct curve. A lot to think about just on a little curve. I'm gonna pull it around. And then um, you'll notice I put my pins in the wrong direction. I always do that. It's just one of those things. Does anybody else do that? I keep um, 
Okay, confession time. I I have a degree in civil and structural engineering. I've built huge buildings. I've designed patterns. I, I've made them a parametric design, which means it can change. So you would have thought some things came easy to me. So I struggle uh, with my left and right. I struggle telling the time quickly on a proper clock. Um, <laughs> sorry, I confession time so i um i also struggle which way around to put pins and no matter how how many times people uh, tell me a tip as to how to do it i just it just doesn't register so um yeah sorry guys if you are following me to the letter and putting the pins in the same direction you're probably going to get a little bit cross with me at some point but yeah i don't know whether it's a thing i don't know but it's um I used to be embarrassed about it, but now I just think, do you know what? I'm a big girl. I can handle just not being able to tell the time quickly. It's quite amusing when I teach the kids. Um, <laughs> I literally have to think, where is the big hand? <laughs> where is the little hand? <laughs> it keeps them amused. I'm constantly uh, putting my hands in front of you because I'm just adjusting all the time. So it isn't... It isn't something that we can just rush and do straight off the bat in a one It's a constant rearranging of the fabric, checking where you are. We're coming to the second corner now, so we're nearly there. It does make it awkward when I say take the pins out at the last minute and then I put them in the wrong way because that makes it impossible. Okay, so there's just this last corner to negotiate around. Now, I guess this may be one of those things that an experienced sewer will make look really easy. Uh, please don't be uh, cross with yourself or embarrassed that you may have to unpick and do it again. Um, you're not alone. I, I think even now, if I rush this, I have to unpick. So please don't beat yourself up about it. Okay, there we go. So that's that finished. I'm going to meet you at the ironing board for the next step. So Here we are with your neck binding that's attached to your bodice. Um, I have to admit, I forgot to press record, so I've already started, so apologies. But what I was doing is I was cutting triangles into the seam allowance. Here we go. So I've cut these around about every two centimetres. Can you see how daring and how close I've gone to the stitch line? I'm hoping that you can. That's what I want you to do. I need you to be brave on this. Otherwise, there's no point doing it. When you've done this all the way around, I want you to then just cut them in half. Can you see the two in the middle where I've cut them in half? We're going to do this all the way around. And what it's going to do is allow this binding to turn over onto the inside of our neckline and make it look beautiful. I leave you doing all your triangles. Remember, be brave, guys. And then join me back when you've cut them all in half. So here we are, all of our edges are trimmed and we're now going to work on folding the bias binding, uh, neck binding, sorry, over onto the wrong side of your project. So this is inside out, so we can actually see the seam. So the first bit we're going to work on is one of these edges. So we're going to press the bias binding up along with that seam. And we're just going to do the same on that excess on the edge. A bit of steam. Can you see how I've just done that? When we've done that, we can tuck this over like so. Can you see? And at that point, we can turn all of the bias binding in at that point just gonna pop a pin so it stays in place and then we can show you what the outcome needs to be one second okay so you can see everything's all nicely tucked inside you're then going to work your way around this bias binding and you're going to pin 
close to this edge here. Now, if I just bring the curve in shot, hopefully you can see the curve. So we're going to do the same thing all the way around. We're going to pull that bias binding up and press it. And then we're going to pull it across and put, I'm just going to put one pin at the shoulder first. And then we have the bit in between to deal with here. So we can curve that bias binding because we cut it on the bias. We can curve it around so that we get, once we get it, a bit of a press, hopefully you can see how we're beginning to curve beautifully around i want you to persevere doing that making it all look lovely and then when we get to the other side i'm going to join you again and we'll pop the ribbon in for the buttonhole all right guys see you in a sec so we've pinned and pressed all the way around so we're left now with two of the ends um, looking really lovely and neat. But what we need to do is to pop the ribbon in for the button. Now, first of all, I want you to check the size of ribbon that you need. So this is the button. So I've just wrapped it around the button. We have quite a lot left at the end. Now we, we want to go just, sorry, we're out of focus, just a little bit past the button. See where my nail is? So that the button can easily go in and out. So we probably only want about a centimetre and a half of ribbon past the actual button. So I've just chopped that off, so let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I've wrapped around the button and we've got about a centimetre and a half extra. And we're gonna take the button away for a second we're going to unpin one of the ends and we're just going to pop the ribbon inside like so. I want you to keep checking that you can definitely get your button through. And when you're happy, you're going to pop a pin back in place. Okay. Now I'm also going to pop a pin through the ribbon itself to keep it in place like so okay so we have the ribbon is just nestled in between what we're going to do when we go back is we're going to stitch close to this folded in edge all the way around and then we're going to do a straight stitch just up here from the front to catch a hold of that ribbon okay i'll see you at the machine okay so we're all set up I've put my stitch length to 3.5 because this is going to be visible, but I wanted to just help you out with this first bit because we've got quite a lot of bulk here at the beginning because we've got all those seam allowances folded in. So we're just at a slightly different angle because I wanted to show you that we can take a hold of these two. So that's the two tails that you normally throw to the back of your machine. And what I'm going to do to make sure it doesn't get all snarled up is I'm just going to pull them through a little bit as we stitch. So here we go, we're going to go forwards and backwards. And I'm just going to help pull it through. Sometimes if you don't do that, all of your fabric gets caught. So that's a good tip. It's a good tip for stretch fabric. And it's also a good tip for any bulky uh, seams that you have, especially with lightweight fabric. So we're going to stitch all the way around here. It's a bit awkward for me because of where the camera angle is, but we're going to stitch close to this folded edge. So not this edge that you can see, it's this folded edge that we folded over. We're going to be nice and accurate. We're going to take our advice from when we first initially put the binding on and we're going to keep this curve because we're stitching around that curve. And remember, you're going to see this on the other side. So nice and steady. See, I've got my pins the wrong way around again. Notice I'm doing this one-handed. That's simply because the camera 
is in the way uh, on the other side. So I wouldn't recommend that you do it one-handed. I would certainly be using um, two hands for this. Now I'm going to stitch all the way around and then I'm going to join you at the end where we uh, deal with the ribbon. We're just coming towards the end, the bit where the ribbon is here. So we're going to take that pin out. We're going to stitch as we have done all the way around to the end. And then we're going to go back Put a needle in, we're going to lift up the foot and spin it round and we're just going to go across that ribbon. So we're going to take the pin out now because the foot's holding it. We're going to go across and then a couple of back stitches. So that's nice and secure. I'll show you. So that's nice and secure so that when we put the button on, we don't have any major problems. Now we can give that a good old press. And what you may find, let's find a bit, is that in some areas you can see, can you just let me focus? You can see your stay stitching. There we go. So we can take the stay stitching out now, give it a really good press, and then we're going to work on the rest of the bodice. Hi, you see my face for the first time in a long time. So uh, hopefully your uh, neck binding looks beautiful. I have all faith that yours looks just like that. Uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to pin and work on creating the bodice. So here's the shoulder seam and we're going to pin down each side. I'll show you the other side. So we're going to pin down each side and stitch with a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. And we're gonna go back to our regular 2.5 uh, length stitch, okay? Because we're gonna do a seam. I thought whilst I was here and you could see me, I would show you that we're also gonna stitch uh, the sleeves, which is the next step. But I thought whilst we were here, we would do it. So I folded the sleeves with the right sides together and I've pinned down that edge. Can you see there that we have the stitch line? That's where we're going to attach the elastic in the next few steps. So that's another one of the tricksy elements uh, of this project. Uh, but we're going to basically complete the bodice, put the sleeves in, do the hemming of the sleeves and everything, and then we're going to attach the skirt to the bottom or work on the skirt for the bottom. So your next step uh, is to stitch at one and a half centimetre seam allowance. We're going to go down each side of the bodice and then we're going to do the two seams down each side of the sleeves. OK, I'll see you when that's done. So I have pressed open the seams on the side of the bodice. And this is one of the sleeves. As you can see, I've pressed open the sleeves here. This is the stitch line that you should have marked onto the wrong side of your fabric. Um, hopefully you've got that. That's where the elastic is going to be attached to create that lovely uh, frill detail at the bottom. Now we're going to uh, hem the sleeves first. Uh, I find it easy to hem them now before we put the elastic on. Otherwise, it's quite a tricky thing to do. Uh, when we're hemming lightweight fabrics or curved um, hems, I find this a really good tip. So I don't know if you beady eyes can notice, but I have black threading now so I've got a contrasting colour to the one that we're going to use and we're going to baste which is a temporary stitch that we're going to pull out later uh, we're going to baste at the hem allowance the seam allowance which is one and a half centimetres on the sleeves um, I've put my stitch to the biggest stitch length that I can have and I'm not going to do any back stitching because the hope is that we can simply pull this out once we've completed the hem so if you're ready we're going to just simply stitch all the way around at a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. We're going to repeat this for the bottom hem as well when we get there, but we have a slightly bigger seam allowance on that one. So we're just gently going all the way around. centimeter until we get back to where we started okay so that's how we're going to do it now we have a lot of ironing to do now guys so i'll meet you back at the ironing board with both of your sleeves um with this temporary stitch and lots of pins 
All right, see you in a minute. So this is the tempera stitching that we did. And what we're going to do is use that as a guide to press the hem upwards. So we're just going to fold it over and press that line. So you see you've got a beautiful line there that you can follow. Then you're going to take a hold of the raw edge, tuck it under to meet that line of stitching, fold it back and pop a pin in. Now I'm just going to do a little bit whilst you're watching so that you can see the process but I'm sure you don't want to see me do this all the way around. I'm sure you'd be happy to be left to your own devices. So we're going to press up to that stitch that we did. We're going to tuck it under and back and then we're going to put a pin in it. Now again you'll probably notice how close together my pins are. I would always recommend to do that with lightweight fabric. I think you will regret it if you don't, um, but that's my, uh, my opinion. Put one more pin in. And then as a final um, help, if you like, we're just gonna go over that with the steam to make it nice and sharp, nice and crisp along that edge. And then when we stitch, when we get back onto the machine, I'll show you the location. But you're going to do this to both of your sleeves and I'll meet you back at the uh, sewing machine. Back at the machine now. Notice we have the uh, mustard thread back in place because this is going to be visible. Because it's visible, we're going to put the stitch length to two and a half. And we're simply going to stitch all the way around. And we're going to be close to this edge, this folded, ed folded edge that we pinned down. So we do our back stitch as normal. And then we're just going to gently, be careful we don't get those nasty pins in us. We're just going to be gentle and stitch all the way around. You're going to do this on both of your sleeves. And then we're going to take a look. At the elastic. Now, if you haven't used this technique before, uh, you may want to practice. Oh, sorry, got a pin. So you may want to practice on um, a piece of scrap fabric. So if you want to get a piece of elastic and a piece of scrap fabric ready um, for your practice, then you've got a chance to do that before we meet back at the uh, machine again. Uh, if you have done it before and you're raring to go or if you've, if you've already had your practice, then what you need is two pieces of 12 millimeter elastic and you need to measure your arm just above your elbow and then minus three centimeters. So if, for example, above your elbow measured 30 centimeters, you're gonna take three away from that. So you're gonna be cutting two pieces of elastic at 27 centimeters, okay? So once you've done both your sleeves, I'll meet you back here with either your practice elastic, can't speak, practice elastic, or the elastic in your sleeve ready to go for it. See you in a bit, guys. Hi. So, <clears throat> what we have here is a beautifully hemmed sleeve. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to take the basting out. So, these bits are the temporary stitching, the basting. Because we did no back stitching and um, a big stitch. If you gently pull one of those ends and just let it gather through the fabric. Now you can pull until it snaps, that's fine because the fabric won't be damaged. It'll just be the thread that snaps. So we'll pull the other side. And then if the other bit is visible, it was black, then we can pull that all the way out. And so it no longer has the basting on the edge of the sleeve. So that can be pressed, so any of the little little holes from the stitching that you can see if you press it and get some steam on it you won't see that anymore okay so now we're going to go on to a bit that you may not have done before which is the uh, putting the elastic into the sleeve so this elastic measures um just above the elbow move that it might help 
I measure just above my elbow and then I minus three centimeters. Because we're not gonna create a loop. Because if we create a loop, it's really difficult when it's so small to actually do it successfully. So what we're actually doing is that where they just butt up together there. But what we'll need to do first is to finish off those raw edges. Okay, so if you hang fire there, I'll tell you how I do it. I'm gonna have a zigzag stitch and I'm gonna go a stitch length of two and a width of two. And I'm very simply right at the end. I'll show you when I finish because I'm doing it in the uh, mustard thread so you'll be able to see it. I'm just gonna go backwards and forwards a couple of times right on the edge. Well, I say right on the edge, close to the edge. Okay, so is that in focus? So it looks like that. So it's all nice and zigzagged across there. We're going to do the same to this end and then I'll meet you at the machine. And we'll learn the technique as to how to stretch it. Okay. Okay, so I have my elastic and we've finished both ends. And then I have my sleeve that we hemmed beautifully earlier. The first thing that we need to do is to mark the... Well, get you in camera. Sorry, guys. Take you back a bit. We're going to mark the quarter points of the elastic and of the sleeve. Because they're going to be very important when we start stretching through the elastic. So... We've already got two points, that's the two end. So we're gonna fold that in half and we're gonna put a pin, oh, gonna put a pin in the center. Okay. Can you, probably best, can you see that? We're then gonna take this end and fold it into the pin and we're gonna put another pin on that crease. like that okay and then we'll do the same on this side so that's just three pins in your elastic and it's just marking off the quarter points in order to have the same thing on the sleeve so that we can match them so we obviously have one point is where the seam is so that's number one but we're going to fold the seam precisely in half so that we know where the other half is at this point. So once we've done that, we're gonna put a pin and we're putting the pin, let me show you, we're putting the pin across our stitch line, not the hem, across our stitch line. When we've done that, we can fold it in half in the other direction so that the seam matches the pin that we've just put in. And if you lay that down flat, you will see we've got two other points that we can mark. Again, for these ones, your pin wants to be on that stitch line, not on the hem. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, and then the original seam is four. Then we've got the start of the elastic, one, two, three, and then we're back where we started. And we're gonna make all these pins match as we stretch the elastic, okay? If you give me one moment, I'll bring you around to the machine and you can see what we're up to. I'm hoping this is the best angle because I want you to see what I'm doing behind here as well as at the front. So I've, I'm here at the seam and I've laid the end of the elastic matching this seam here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is put, oh, sorry, as well as, can you see that it is on top of that red line as well? So it's on top of your stitch line and in line with this seam. We're going to set our machine to a zigzag stitch and it's going to have a stitch length of three and a stitch width of five. And the first thing we're going to do before we get anything exciting is we're just going to do a couple of forward and a couple of back stitches so that this elastic is anchored. Now we need the needle in the elastic so whenever we stop during this process before we let go of any of the uh, fabric and elastic we need the needle to be in the fabric to hold its position. Okay so you can see 
my first pin on the elastic is here and then my first pin on the fabric is there. So the first thing I'm going to do is stretch so that those two locations match and I'm going to hold it here in position. Now if I try to stitch now, nothing would travel through the machine. So I also need to take a hold of the back and I'm hoping I don't block your view whilst I'm doing this. So when I'm pulling, I'm also checking that I'm central on that red stitch line too. I'm going to take a hold of the back. As I stitch, my arms are going to move in that location. So I'm just keeping the tension of the fabric. I'm not trying to stretch the fabric. It's just the elastic. Okay, let's see. See if this is the best angle. Are we ready? So see how my hand is moving at the back in the same time. Now I'm going to have to stop because I'm getting caught here with this one. So I put my needle in. And I'm just going to let go. I just need to grip a hold of this front bit differently, that's all, because I'm getting caught on the machine. So now I'm off. When I get to those pins, I can take those pins both out. And we're going to repeat the process for the next one. So I have a pin here in the elastic and then a pin here on the sleeve itself. So I'm going to stretch to, so that they match. And I'm over the top of the red mark. I'm going to take a hold of the back and we're going to do exactly the same. Again, I'm going to get to a point where I can't keep going. I need to change my grip here. So my needle is in, I can let go and I can just swap that grip around. And then I'm off. Take the pins out. It is actually quite a good angle, I think. You can see what I'm up to. So I've got a pin and a pin. You guessed it, guys. We're going to stretch so that they match. Checking that I'm over the top. Can you see the red? Yeah, you can just about see the red. Checking that I'm over top over the top of the red line. I'm going to take a hold of the back and we're going to keep going. My needle is in. My machine, by the way, I can set it so that the needle always ends in. It's a little bit awkward if you don't have that function. I do appreciate that. It isn't the end of the world, but it does make things a little bit more difficult if you can't uh, use that feature. Take the pins out. And then I just have the end that needs to match up with the end of the elastic here. So it should be, it's the same distance, so it shouldn't cause too much trouble. Pulling it so that everything matches. I'm across the red, take a hold of the back, and then I'm off. Got to stop again. My needle is in. The last one is always the trickiest, by the way. Then when I get to the end, we're going to do a couple of back stitches and take it off. So hopefully when I take this off, you will see, I'm going to turn it the right way around because that's the best way to view it. That we have a beautifully gathered ruffle on the end of the on the end of the sleeve and then inside we just have the elastic and the zigzag now i'm going to go and put some steam on this I'm just going to press it with some steam because it will just kind it will um shrink the elastic slightly but it just makes everything much more even so i'm going to go and do that if you do that as well and then you can have a go at the second sleeve then we'll take a breath Take a moment if you want to, because then we're going to look at inserting the sleeves. Now, this is uh, one of the things that lots of people avoid, but I'm here. We're going to do it together. We're going to go step by step, uh, but we're going to get this beautiful sleeve into your bodice. And then all we have to do is the pockets and skirts, guys. All right. See you in a minute. OK, are we ready? I will pretend that this is easy. This is not an easy thing to do. Um, but it's a doable thing to do. But it's a real technique. So 
a technique takes practice to get it right. But we have all the time in the world, so it is a pleasure, yeah? Okay, so let's have a go at this. This is an inset sleeve, which is what makes it difficult, as opposed to a raglan sleeve. Um, we have to create the shoulder detail here. So what you will find is that the opening uh, for your sleeve in the bodice here is much smaller than the amount of fabric that you have in the sleeve at this point because what we're trying to do is gather it in and create that lovely detail across the shoulder um, it is a lovely detail but it can be tricksy so let's have a go i'm going to take it nice and steady and i'm going to try and explain each step the best way that I can because I'm very much if I understand why I'm doing it I might be more inclined to actually pay attention and do it so I have the glorious uh, sleeve that we finished a moment ago and I also have the bodice that you should have that looks like this I want the bodice to be inside out by that I mean we can see all of the seams etc and then this here is the armhole we're going to take the sleeve which is the correct way around so it's all in it's beautiful and we're going to pop it let me just move this down a touch we're going to place it down into the actual bodice armhole we're just going to match the underarm seam. I will show you some close-ups, but I want to check something first. So I'm just going to pin the underarm seams so that they match. And then I want you to check. See how there's one... Hello, Johnny boy. He always turns up at the best times. See how we have one notch and one notch. And then at the other side... Johnny, come on. We have two notches, can you see that? Two notches and two notches. Now that was actually more luck. Johnny, out of the way. Keep going, Bambies. Come on. This is a delicate bit of the operation. <laughs> Where was I? So we checked we had matching notches either side of the armhole. Now, there is a chance that actually they don't match because it could be the sleeve for the other side because these sleeves are not symmetrical. You have more fabric in the back to accommodate the movement of your shoulder. So if the first time you pop it in, those matches, those notches, sorry, don't match, it's the sleeve for the other side. So just swap it around. As it turns out, these match beautifully, despite Johnny's uh, intention to uh, cause a kerfuffle. So we've got a pin matching the underarm seams i want you to put a pin at the two notches and a pin at the one notch that's our first step now the pins for a sleeve we should always put them at the seam allowance so by that i mean the line that you're going to be stitching which is one and a half centimeters away from the edge Okay, can you see? I will explain why in a moment, why we do that, but if we could just stick with that rule for the moment. There is one more construction mark on your sleeve and that's right at the top of the sleeve head, can you see? And that notch matches the shoulder seam. So let's pin that in place. This pin, because I know it'll be easier when we get to it, we're gonna put straight down like that so that's the top i'm going to put it vertically rather than horizontally so what that has given us is a bit of an idea as to what problem we're facing so let's hope i can see this on the camera can you see the big wobbly bit that's the sleeve and that sleeve has to fit inside that curve so as you can see it's definitely bigger and then on the other side, we have a similar situation. So this is the inside, and then that's the hole we're trying to get it to fit into. Now I'm going to try and change the camera angle so that you can see it better, because it's quite tricky 
with a floppy fabric and the angle that we're at there. So I'm just going to move you, bear with me. Okay, so let's show you what we're looking at. This is the underarm. This is our first notch and this is our top notch. You can see what we're dealing with between the two. So what we want to do is to create a curve with that um, sleeve hole. So the bit that's on the bodice, which is difficult when it's um, a floppy fabric. So let me show you how that works. Can you see how we've created, I need to move that arm, a curve here. And what that then allows is the fabric to kind of ripple of the sleeve to ripple in between. Now that is exactly what we're looking for. We want to make sure these ripples are quite even. And then we're going to start placing our pins. So we're going to start in the middle and we're going to put our pin. I will move my hand in a moment. We're going to put our pin at our seam allowance down. And you see how the ripple then stays above the pin? You can just about see that. So that ripple is the excess fabric. And that is exactly where it should be. It should be above the pin. And that's because where we're going to stitch, we've put the pin and we've made it all lovely and flat so that we can actually stitch past it. Can you see? And then we have a ripple above that is not going to cause us any problems. Now, the biggest issue with showing you how to do sleeves is that I have the technique because I've done lots and lots of them. So sometimes I can make it look a bit too easy. It is not easy. So please, if this is the first, second, third, fourth time, expect to take these out and put them back in again. But what you're actually looking for is this. So you can see the ripple, but hopefully you can see that where the pins are at the one and a half centimetre in, there's a lovely straight line for you to stitch. Now, if I put the pins further down, that ripple would be right bang slack where we're going to stitch. So we'd end up with lots of pleats and it would be awful. Equally, if we put them further up, we haven't actually pinned the place that we need to, so the ripples would still be there. So it is quite a precise thing to get them where you want them. I'm now going to work on the other side. And there's always one side that's worse than the other one. So we're going to create the curve. It's the creation of that curve that really, really helps us to do this. When we've created the curve, we're going to even out those ripples on the sleeve. Then we're going to put our first pin in the middle at the stitch line, a seam allowance down. And then we can start to work at the ones in between. Now, the fact that this dress is made out of lightweight fabric should help you with this. It doesn't help um, in terms of getting your fingers and arms in the right place. Uh, but what it does help is, is it's quite forgiving. If it's a thick woven fabric, think about a jacket, this process can be quite tricky because there's no forgiveness within the fabric. But you do have a little bit within a lightweight fabric. So I have all faith that you're going to do this beautifully. And you know what? If you don't do it beautifully the first time, try again. Take it out and try again. It is not a failure to do this incorrect the first time. Right, can we see where we're at? Can you see there? You can see some lovely ripples, but you should be able to see that the armhole is nice and flat. Now I'm going to transfer these pins to the inside. They're the pins where we matched the notches. One more to do. And I'm just going to put another pin that's between the underarm seam and the notch just so that we're all pinned and there's no escape and then I'm just going to show you again what it looks like so can you see these are all this is all the ripple of the excess but where your pins are is nice and flat ready for you to stitch it's going to take your time to master that lovelies so take your time have a brew in between 
have a break in between, come back next week, however you want to play it. If you're a bit tired in the process, I would pause here and come back to it with a fresh mind another time. Um, but if you are ready and good to go, I shall see you at the sewing machine because the technique for stitching a sleeve does not stop at the pinning. Okay, so we're set up. I'm using a straight stitch, just your normal two and a half uh, for the length. What I want you to, I've tried to put the camera so that I can be in here negotiating the fabric um, and I don't block. So fingers crossed that does work quite well. What I want you to notice is we're here at the underarm seam and then we have the sleeve here. So it's above the machine. So we haven't slid it onto the machine. It's actually above the machine and we're going to stitch around and then back on here and down. Okay, now we're going to do it nice and steady. The first bit, sorry, I will have to do a back stitch. Uh, I'll do a back stitch when we end there, that'll be help. So the first bit we're going to set off. Notice we have a curve. So that curve is what we're following. And it's seam allowance one and a half. So we're coming nice and steady around the curve. You see the two notches that we're coming up to? It gets tricky after the notches, so you might be feeling confident up to this point, but then you'll start to see these uh, ripples. Now, we're going to use the technique that we did to actually pin it, and we're going to do this. We're going to create the curve. Can you see if I hold it up? It's going to create that curve. So we take that pin out create that curve whilst we're stitching so i'm constantly checking that we're not catching any ripples and making a pleat I'm checking my seam allowance and then i'm stopping quite regularly to organize the fabric and you must do that so i'm checking underneath that i'm not catching anything and then i'm going to go back to here the actual stitching take the pin out and i'm going to create that curve it's the creation of that curve that's preventing any of those ripples becoming a pleat within the sleeve. Gonna, again, I'm constantly checking, moving everything around. It's the only way that we can do this. So I have my curve still. I'm going nice and steady. This is, this here is the top. So we are approaching the halfway point. Your job at this moment in time is quite difficult. You're doing lots of things. You're, you're not just simply stitching a line. You're manipulating the fabric so that it does what you want it to do. So that's why it can be tricky. And it's quite usual to uh, certainly when you first start out with sleeves to get little pleats and little pucks and, and tucks don't be disheartened it really is a tricky situation so it's practice i have lots of people uh, certainly in the classes that i teach who avoid doing inset sleeves or they just throw their project at me and say they can't do it and ask me to do it now i'm not a horrible person and Sometimes I will do it because I can see that a person's frustrated and I don't like um, for them to give up on a project because they're frustrated. But me doing it is of no help whatsoever because what's going to happen, what's going to happen is they're never going to learn. And it is about making those mistakes until you have that technique in your armoury, as I like to say. So, so far, we're not going too badly. Sorry if my hand is in the way. I just needed to manipulate a little bit of fabric out of the way. See when I take the pin, that jumps up. So I'm going to go back to where we started. I'm going to create the curve. And then we have a chance of avoiding it. The worst thing that you can do is to chase this bump all the way to the end. Because you have a really weird... Um, underarm pleat which is not very flattering so what we want to do is to I'm just going to put the needle in 
and then we can push that fabric up out of the way and we've got a chance now of coming around this corner without any major issues so we're just approaching the notches here on the other side so actually we're nearly finished and again i'm going to create the curve because i'm stitching a curve my back stitch was in front of you then do the back stitch we're going to take this off and you should find that you have if I can show it might be too close a really lovely sleeve there you go without any puckers I will show you this better we're going to go and press it and I'll show you that better but again please don't be cross with yourself if you don't um, do it the first time that's what you want picker is for. It's not a failure. You have to practice these things. I wish you all of the luck and I have everything crossed. Okay, guys, I'll see you when you've done that. And we're going to be working on the um, on the skirts. So if you have all of your pieces together for the skirts and we'll do some easy straight stitching. All right, then. Okay, confession. You, I have jumped ahead because I forgot to press record. So I apologize for that. So let me show you what we actually have. So here on the table is one of the upper skirts and it's facing the ceiling. So the right side is facing the ceiling. And what I did was I've attached the pocket down that side seam. I've matched the notches that we put in earlier so I pinned it and stitched it I laid with the right sides of the pocket facing the right sides of the skirt. Okay, I've then gone on to the other side of this upper skirt and I've attached the other side pocket in exactly the same manner. So I've stitched down the side. The last thing for us to do is to put between these two pockets that we have here we have the final upper skirt that we can then pin matching the notches pin along here and stitch and then take the other side match the notches and pin and stitch along here so what you will end up with is a circle of fabric that goes upper skirt pocket upper skirt pocket and it's all one full circle so whilst i pin and stitch this i shall let you do the same when you've stitched all four of those seams i shall meet you at the ironing board all you need with you is some pins and your fabric circle see you in a sec Okay, so this is our circle that we have stitched and here is a seam and here is a seam. Now this centre bit is the pocket, so it's the small bit. And what we're going to do to each of these pockets is we're going to press the seams in towards the pockets. And we're going to do that to both of the pockets. Okay, so that's the first one, bring it around to find the second one, there we go, so all the seams get pressed in, not like normally we're pressing the seams open, on these ones they're all going in towards the pocket. Now when you've done that, we're going to fold it in the pocket itself in half so that these two seams match. Now we're going to do this precisely, so we're going to pin it. We're going to put a pin in the bottom. And then I'm also going to put a pin at the top. So 
So this is where we actually create the pocket itself. So, so far it's just extra fabric, but now we're going to make it into a pocket. I'll just lay that onto there. So this is the seam and what I'm doing, I'm checking the back and I'm checking the front. I'm pushing the seams together and I'm putting a pin down that seam. And what I can do is I can check that it's right by looking at that side and then checking on this side that we're still on the stitch line. I'm just going to take this over there so that I can work on it easier for you. Let's make sure you can see it properly. So here's the fold and all we're doing is we're making all of the seams match down this centre. It is really worth putting some time into this bit because if you don't pin this accurately, when you stitch in a second, what you're gonna end up with is a really weird looking seam because all of the seams that you pressed out away from the pocket edge are gonna be on show. It's gonna look really odd. So spend some time on this. In a second when I've put a couple of pins in, I will show you what it is I'm achieving. In close up, as it were. I actually, despite, you know, doing all of this sleeves and the elastic, I find this the most difficult part of the project. <laughs> I don't know why, but I do. I think it's because you're doing everything blind. You can't see what you're doing. It's kind of... I've thought, if, is there an easy way? Is there a better way of doing it? And I haven't, I haven't found one. So we're stuck with this. So on this side, we're checking that all the pins are on the skirt side of our stitch line. And then we're going to turn it over and we're going to look at the back and we're going to check that when they come out, they're doing exactly the same thing. They're all at the skirt side, which is now that side of the stitch. As a final check, we can open it up. Sorry, I've got some stray bits of there, fray. We can open it up and just check that that seam doesn't look odd. And what I mean by that is there's nothing else caught. It's just a lovely straight seam. Now, when you've done that to both sides, what we're going to do is stitch from the top down to where the double notch is. Then we're going to leave a gap. We're going to start at the second notch and stitch right down to the bottom. It's important that we stitch just slightly onto the skirt side of that stitch line. And again, that's so we don't catch all of this in the seam that we're making. I will show you on the machine. So if you get all your pinning done and I'll see you over there. So this side we have the pocket and this side is the skirt. So here's where we pin. So that's the original stitch line and the pins just to that side. Now, just by the nature of how I pinned, I'm actually stitching from the bottom up to the first notch first. So I just wanted you to see that we're just staying on the skirt side of the stitch line. So not by much, maybe a couple of mil, but definitely on the skirt side of the original stitch line. And we're gonna stitch all the way until we're opposite the notch. It's a good idea to kind of use your fingers to feel that you haven't got, sorry, just caught on the camera. Good idea to feel that you haven't got loads of bulk here. If you can feel lots of bulk, that's an indication that you're catching all of this in, on the wrong side. So just do it nice and steady. You can see the notches here. So we're going to get to just opposite that notch. 
stitches there and we're going to do some back stitches now i'm doing a few back stitches simply because that's the bottom of your pocket so you're going to actually create quite a lot of uh, stress at that point especially if you're like me and you live with your hands in your pockets all the time so then just moved it up to the top so here you can see where the double notch is there and there so we're going to start this one opposite that double notch it's only four centimeters this one and we're going to do the same thing we're going to stay just on the skirt side of that stitch and we're going to go all the way up to the top okay i'll join you at the ironing board and you can see how beautiful that now looks okay so this is the pocket i'm going to press it towards what I'm now going to call the front of the skirt so it doesn't really matter which one because they're the same but you're going to press it towards one and then you can allow this seam to go out towards the back to give it a lovely uh, press so that everything is in the right location what should happen is that everything matches top and bottom which is lucky because our next step is that we're just going to pin So I pin those together across the top and do the same across the bottom. And then we're just going to baste them in place so that the pockets will always stay at the front of your dress. So we're going to just stitch across the top and bottom just at a one centre seam allowance so that they're all held in place we're going to do the same on the other side now as you saw that pocket face this direction this pocket has to then face that direction because this is the front so we're going to do the same on here so we're going to press everything beautifully And then before we go over to do the basting, I just want to show you what these pockets look like from the right side of the fabric. Hopefully you'll be impressed with what you've achieved. So all the pins are in place. Let's have a look at what it looks like the right way around. Okay, so that's one of your pockets, there you go, inside there looking lovely and you've got exactly the same on the opposite side. Now I'm going to let you baste across those top and bottom, so it's across where you've pinned at a one centimetre seam and across here and then we're going to start work on the uh, lower half of your skirt. Okay. We're nearly there peeps, we've just got a few bits to do and you'll have finished. So hopefully you've enjoyed the process so far. There is a bit of gathering to do and a bit of elastic to put in. Other than that, we're good to go. So what I have here are the two bottom skirts, so as you can see they're quite long. I've got the two edges, I've matched them with the right side of the fabric together and I've also checked that the top here has got the notches remember we had the notches at the halfway point so once we've checked that they're all happy and everything's facing the right direction we're simply going to pin down each side and then stitch at a one and a half centimeter seam allowance which you guys are really good at now you don't need to see me do that so we're just going to stitch at a regular two and a half length stitch down each side to create a fabric circle what we're going to do then is we're going to hem it and we're going to hem it exactly the same way that we hem the um we hemmed the sleeves so if you meet me back at the machine with your fabric circle that's all been with the seams pressed open we're going to put a different colour thread into our machine as we 
did for the uh, sleeves and we'll get going okay so all our seams are lovely and pressed and what we're doing now is we're stitching for the hem now the hem allowance on the bottom edge is two centimeters so i have my trusty black thread in again and i'm set at the highest stitch uh, length that i can I'm not doing any back stitches. I'm simply stitching all the way around the bottom. We know it's the bottom of the skirt because it hasn't got any notches along this line because they're at the top edge, okay? So that's important. So I'll leave you to it because it does take a while and we're just literally two centimeters all the way around. Now I am gonna mix it up a little bit after this because whilst we have the black thread on i may jump to the step where we do the gathering stitches before we actually stitch the hem for real may as well make use of having this black so if you stay at the machine and uh, i'll be back with you to show you how to do the gather up at the top i thought whilst we still had the black thread in the machine we'd take advantage of it and we just jump forward to step 15 which is a gathering stitch so we're going to do two rows of stitching one at one centimeter seam allowance and one at two centimeter seam allowance we're going to start this seam and we're going to continue round till we hit the other seam so we're only doing half of it at a time so let's do the one centimeter notice no back stitching and we're still at that biggest stitch length And that's where we're going to stop. So we're going to leave quite a long tail of thread. I'm going to show you on the same one where we do the next row and then you can repeat it on the other half. So again, we're going to start at that seam, but this time we're going to go two centimeters. So you can either use the edge of your foot on this row stitch that you've done, or you can look at the edge of the fabric. That's your choice. No back stitch, and we're off. going to stop at that seam now the reason we don't go all the way around is simply when we're gathering so much fabric there's a tendency for the threads to break and when they break we have to start again so that's why we do it in two halves i'm going to leave you to do the two rows on this next half um but whatever you do don't gather we're not ready to do the gathering yet we're going to hop back to step 14 and we're going to finish off that hem so i'll meet you at the ironing board bring lots of pins okay so here we are with your hem i've started it off it's exactly the same way that we hemmed your uh, sleeves apart from it's just slightly bigger so i've pressed up using the stitch line that we've just put in tucked under and then I've popped some pins in. So when you've done this all the way around, it's going to take you a while, but just stick at it. It's well worth it. When you're ready to stitch, you're going to stitch close to the folded edge. So not the edge that has the stay stitching, the other edge. Stitch close to here. 
with a stitch length of 3.5 because this is going to be visible. When you've done that, we will have a look at gathering this bottom skirt, lower skirt, sorry, to the uh, upper skirt and we'll uh, get all our gathers put in. So I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so what we have now is a lower skirt that's all hemmed beautifully and we've got the gather stitch at the top now we need that inside out so we need to be able to see the seams so that's the first step then we're going to take the upper skirt that you made with those pockets and we've got it the right way around so we can't see the seams we can see the pockets but we can't see the seams that's the right way around and what we're going to do is we're going to put the top inside the skirt first so remember the top is the bit that only has the small section stitched as opposed to the big section at the bottom so we're going to take that and we're going to put it inside the skirt now i'm just going to put a few pins in place and then i can show you a bit more of a close-up and what i'm going to do is i'm going to match the side seam of the upper skirt with the side seam of the lower skirt and we're going to put a pin. I'm going to do that both sides so at both side seams then you should have at the halfway point of the lower a notch and you should have a corresponding notch at the halfway point of the upper skirt so we're going to match those points too so there'll be one at the front and then also one at the back there's that couldn't find it but it is there and you to you so we've matched the four quarter points and what we're intending then to do is to pull all the gather stitches so that the big skirt matches the smaller one so let me just try and show you where we're at so we have on the inside we have the upper skirt that has the pockets. It's the right way around, but it's placed inside the other skirt. And then we have the big one with all the excess gather here. So I'm gonna pull the gathers and hopefully then it'll be make it easy to show you what we're dealing with. Now, let me just, we're gonna work at the quarter points. So, I've just found the two rows there and I'm going to pull those two and I'm going to pull them together and what will happen is it will start to gather this bit of fabric so let me pull so we're just going to gently pull and push the fabric now we don't want to gather it all here because eventually the threads will snap so we're going to do a little bit of time and we're going to push that gather only as far as that first pin though that's all we're trying to do so nice and gentle also if you do it gently and you push it to the end you get a much more even gather so let's get this sorted i'm hoping you're enjoying this project i have to say i have one, two, three, four of these uh, dresses, and I absolutely love them. They actually replaced my lockdown joggers, which I'd got into the habit of wearing far too often. But they are seriously just as comfortable, even if I do say so myself. That's a horrendous plug, isn't it? But it is fact. It is the truth. I do not lie. Okay, where are we? So... 
can you see that's all gathered it's not quite even yet but what i want to show you is although it's all gathered on that side on the other side there is no gather so we've only gathered it to the same size as this fabric behind now that we know it's approximately the right size we're just going to spend a little bit of time spreading them out even because you don't want a big bunch of gathers in one location and then hardly any in the next so we're just gonna even these gathers out and then once we're happy we're going to put some pins in now i'm going to put some pins in and then hold it up so that you can see what i'm up to one of the tips that i will give you is to put your pins in that direction yeah vertically not horizontally and also make sure that the head of the pin is not inside the fabric so the head of the pin wants to be at the top end it just makes them easier to pull out when you're stitching it later now i'm going to go pintastic I'm not going to say sorry for that. Pins are your best friend when you're doing a project like this. Just a few more pins and then I'm going to hold it up. And then I'm going to leave you to do the other three quarters before we meet again at the sewing machine to stitch it all together. Okay. So, can you see how the pins are sticking up the top here? That's what we want to see. And it's a nice even gather. I'm just going to flip you around this way. But notice there is no gather on this side. So I'm going to leave you to do all this gathering. Now the other side to this gather you can do from the other seam. Yeah, does that make sense? So when you're all gathered and all looking even and beautiful, I'll meet you back at the machine and we'll stitch this together. You are so close to finishing, guys. You've done such a great job so far. I can't wait to see your end results. So let's do this. So we're all nice, evenly gathered. We've got so many pins, we don't know what to do with it. We're doing a normal stitch, 2.5 length, and we're gonna be stitching down the center of these two lines. Remember, one of them was at one centimeter, one was at two, therefore the midpoint is magically the one and a half centimetre that we will be looking for. So we're going to start off normally with our back stitch and we're going to stitch all the way through. Now we're going to take the pins out as we go and we're going to keep checking that our gathers are going in this direction. We don't want to catch any like that, so we're just going to go nice and steady. Pins out as we go, which is why it's so super cool to put them on this side. So I hope you took on board that tip. And every now and again, we're going to just stop and check that nothing is getting caught underneath. Because there's so much fabric, it's really easy to accidentally get things caught. So we're always checking, everything is going out to the side pins out as we go all the way around okay there's quite a lot of skirt so you need to pull it around get yourself all set up again and off you go now I'm going to let you continue to do that you're going to go all the way around then you're going to take out your gather stitches and I shall meet you at the ironing board. We'll give it a really lovely press, make it look beautiful and then we've got to attach it to your bodice. See you in a bit. One of the most
most important things to think about when you're gathering is uh, the pressing. Everybody thinks, oh, I've gathered and that's fine, but actually pressing it really puts uh, an edge onto your project. So hopefully you can just about see the pocket there. What I'm going to do is going to put all of the seam allowances towards that direction. And then we're just going to get some steam and we're going to press all of this gather. So seam allowance up towards you at the camera and then get some steam on it. Just makes a really crisp edge, which is what you want when you're sewing. You don't want everything to be lumpy and bumpy. You want it all nice and crisp. Now the gather's still there. We're not pressing the gather out, but we're making that seam look so much better. I will hold it up for you in a second to show you what I mean. Then the next step is we're going to attach this skirt to the bodice. We're going to do it without elastic before we and then add the elastic in a very similar way to how we did the elastic on the sleeves. Okay, I think that's me all the way around. Let me show you what that looks like. Hopefully you can see from here. Okay, so how lovely does that gather look? It drapes so beautifully. Yeah, I think we're going to be really pleased with this one. So we're going to keep the... We're going to keep, no, we're going to put the skirt inside out. I will remember what I'm doing. So the skirt is now inside out. And then I'm going to take the bodice, and the bodice is the right way round. And we're going to put the bodice inside the skirt. So that's the neck edge. The neck edge goes in first, all the way inside the skirt. We're going to check that the front, where the pockets are, is lined up to the front of our bodice. And it wasn't, so let me flip that around. And very similar to what we've just done, we're going to match the side seams. Now there shouldn't be a huge amount of excess fabric on this, um, but if you decided to do a larger skirt uh, compared to, sorry, I'm trying to think and talk, it doesn't work. If you decided to do a larger skirt to bodice, then you will have more gather. But what you will then need to do maybe is to follow the steps that we did previous where we put the gather stitch in. But what you should have is something a little bit like this. So it's almost like when you were easing in your sleeve. So we'll start in the middle and we'll pin it all the way through. I've matched the notch there to the centre back, the seam that we stitch, very first thing that we did. Then I'm going around to match the side seam again. And then we should have a notch on the front bodice and on the front skirt. I can't seem to find the one on the front skirt. That's okay, we can we can do that. Let me just it might be there, it might be just that I can't quite see it. Let's have a look. Okay, sometimes it doesn't quite catch. So I've got center point of my front skirt and the center point of my front body. So I've matched four locations. And again, we can then decide what we have to deal with. So there isn't much difference across the front. So we're gonna gently ease that fabric in. And what that means is that you make it work. You make it do as it's told. I find it easiest to start in the middle. And it's also a good idea, very similar to when you did your sleeve, to put your pins a seam allowance down from the edge, so on the stitch line. And what you should find is that you can very easily and gently ease any excess fabric. OK, 
Okay, so that's the front with first half of the front. I'll do the first half of the back just so that you've seen both in action and then I'll let you persevere. Now there's a little bit more excess at the back here. So we're just starting the middle and put our pin and we're just going to make this fabric fit. Now if you're able to stretch the fabric a little bit that's absolutely fine. Just stretch it out gently and put your pins in. That will not be a problem. Also, it's worth noting, if you get the odd little pucker when you're stitching this bit, don't worry too much because we're going to put elastic in, which is going to bring everything in anyway. So I don't think you're even going to notice uh, that there might be a slight inaccuracy in your stitching. So I just have a couple more pins to put in. And that's the first half all pinned. Going to work on this other half, do exactly the same thing. And then we're going to stitch all the way around at a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. I don't think you need to see me do that. I think you're more than capable of doing that now. So we're just going to stitch all the way out, taking the pins out as you go. I will then meet you back at the sewing machine when you've done that, when you've all pressed all those seams. And I would like you to have with you your elastic pre-cut and it's going to be cut to your waist plus five centimetres. OK, I shall see you there. OK, so I have my elastic cut. We are going to finish the ends just like we did um, for the ones we used on the sleeve. So I have a zigzag set at two and two. And we're just going backwards and forwards to stop the end from fraying. What I also have done on the waist that we've just stitched. So I've left the bodice inside the skirt. So the seam is still uh, showing as I stitched it. And I've put a pin at each centre seam and then at the notches at the centre back and centre front. So they're my four points that I'm going to use to match to the elastic. So I'm going to do the same thing with the elastic. I'll just pop you there so you can see what I'm up to. So I'm going to fold the elastic in half and put a pin at the halfway point. And these are the pins that we're going to use to match, just like we did before. I'm then going to take one end and fold it into the pin. And then put another pin on the fold. And I'm going to do the same in this direction. So I'm bringing this into the centre. And then putting a pin where the fold is. So I'm going to set my zigzag to a stitch length of three and a width of five and we're going to start the process all over again so I'm going to start at the centre back because I think that's a good place to start I already have a pin there so I don't have to match this elastic onto any stitch line I just have to make sure that the elastic stays in the seam allowance so I'm just going to anchor the elastic in the first position and then I'll bring you forward so you can see what's happening. So I, you can't see but I've just stretched the pin to the other side. I'm taking a hold of the back and we're just simply going to zigzag and move through the machine like we did previously. Just need to make sure that the elastic doesn't creep onto this side of the seam. So that's why I stopped.
first set of pins, I'm going to take them out and I'm going to find the next pin that we're going to be working towards. Pull the elastic so that the pins now match and we're going to set up. Now these are much longer pieces that we're trying to work with. So you may find that you have to stop more often than you did previous. That's fine. Our arms are only so long. which I can take out and then find the next one. I'm going to do this all the way around and then you'll be pleased to know the last thing for you to do is to hand stitch your button onto the back. So once you've done this, I'll meet you back here. If you have your button and a needle and thread, we can get going with that. And breathe. So now we're just going to do the last tiny bit and then you can have your ta-da moment. Okay, so I want to mark where the button's going to go. So I've put, let's turn this around so you guys can see. So I've matched the two backs that are right at the top and I'm just seeing where that black ribbon goes to and I'm just going to go just inside it so I'm talking millimetres yeah go a bit close I'm talking millimetres and all that is so that we can actually get it around the button so that is the location for us to start doing uh start attaching our button so the first thing that we're going to do is just some small stitches. We don't have to um, put a knot in at the end of the thread. We're just going to do three small stitches in that spot. I'm hoping you can see this. So we're just going to do so that it's all anchored and you know it's not going anywhere. At that point, we can thread the button on. And hold it in place and then we're going to go through the hole in the button all the way through to the back. I'm going all the way through to the back because it will give it a bit of substance. It will give the button something to hang on to and then we're back through that button from the back. And then we're going to do that again. Now you need to do that until the button it feels secure. I'm going to say at least five times just to make sure you can do more. If you've got a heavier button, you might need to do it more times than that. But you just, you don't want the button to come away. Oh, I like a bit of hand sewing at the end of a project. Hand sewing is not my favourite thing, but it's, um, it's a nice come down from all the hustle and bustle. So I think that's nice and secure now. And now on the back, we're going to repeat the process that we did on the front. So we're just going to do some small stitches, three of them in exactly the same spot. And that's enough to anchor the button in place. I, don't, I think that might be four actually, but I guess that's better than less. Chop off the thread. And then we just need to check that the button does actually go over the top. And it does. And there you go. There's our button. So, nice press of all of your garment, guys. And then you can show off. I'm going to go and press this one. I have a confession to make. It only has one sleeve. Now, there's a reason for that. 
I cheated. So I haven't seen the lady because of lockdown. I haven't seen the lady who this dress is for. And I can't get a hold of her to check the measurement on the arm. So I've done one of them to show you how to do it. But I do need to speak to her before I put the effort in to do the other one. So please forgive me. But in a moment, you go away, give it a good old press. And then we'll have our ta-da moment. All right, guys, see you soon. I'm hoping you're as excited about yours as I am about this one. I absolutely love this fabric. I love the drape and everything about it. And even if I say so myself, it looks rather nice with uh, my necklace, I think. Maybe I'll have to lend it to Rosie when she models. So apologies for the sleeve, but I hope you understand why. And I'm hoping that yours looks as beautiful now i honestly i cannot wait to see yours uh, i love seeing all of your projects so please 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 share them uh but for now hope you enjoyed it if you did leave me a comment let me know if there's anything you think i missed out equally let me know we're not perfect guys all right you take care bye